Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alicia Nichols Drew. I'm, a, I'm an associate professor at De Montfort University in Leicester, and I'm really honoured to be a chartered forensic practitioner and a Churchill Fellow. There are many Churchill Fellows um, within the forensic science sector, and Rachel, who's um, the co creator of Remote Forensic CSI is another, and there are other members as well within that community. So this presentation today, it relates to my career as a practitioner within an evidence recovery unit, working on a range of uh, case offences such as armed robbery, homicide, sexually motivated, uh, terrorism, cold case reviews. Um, and that's really being a practitioner that's influenced my career and transition into academia and also into research and I applied for and undertook a travel fellowship with the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust in 2018 and so my this presentation relates to that as well. So, and obviously I'm talking about knife crime and in particular pointing out the need for change and I just hope that I enhance the concept around knife crime and how if we change our perception, we can actually have a proactive impact on knife crime rather than always having a reactive um, approach in responding to crime. I'm hoping that we can actually prevent it in time. So if you look at these images on the screen in front of you, um, think about the kitchen tool that you'll use to slice a banana, maybe chop up a carrot or cut a piece of birthday cake. The most common type of kitchen tool that comes to mind, I imagine, will be a kitchen knife. And when you think of kitchen knives, I imagine that you think of something that looks like this. Um, a typical kitchen knife has a pointed blade. However, uh, in cases around the world, not only in the United Kingdom, it uh, knife enabled crime, if we can refer it to that, or uh, cases involving sharp implements, it's actually the kitchen knives that are most prevalent. Um, in my case experience, we've encountered swords, machetes, zombie knives, self-made sharp implements. However, the most prevalent is a kitchen knife. And the reason that we have such uh, an issue with kitchen knives in particular is purely based on the design of the blade and the fact that we have that pointed tip. So much so, when you look at the data from the uh, Safety Institute, ROSPA, in 2020, they conducted a home accident survey um, in the UK, and it was actually the kitchen that was the most prevalent area for home accidents at that time. And kitchen knives were the most likely cause of an accident. So bearing in mind, you might have incidents of hot water scalding people or burns from ovens and such like. It's actually kitchen knives that cause the most incidents. So ROSPA is the Royal Society for the Pre Prevention of Accidents. Also, within the UK, the National Health Service, um, there are over 4,000 admissions to accident and emergency units per year due to sharp implements. And every year within the United Kingdom, we have Operation SEPTA, which is our anti-knife crime campaign that police forces have um, to prevent um, knife offences. So this often involves amnesty bins outside police stations where members of the public can offload any sharp implement. Now, in the top hand, right hand corner of your screen, you'll see this statue. We effectively call this statue the Knife Angel. And it's a very tall uh, structure and it's actually built or constructed from 100,000 uh, donated sharp implements. So it is uh, an impressive uh, structure to see firsthand. And all of the blades for, on this structure, this sculpture, are um, actually dulled, so they're no longer sharp. And as I previously mentioned, when you look at the data, 
uh, 41% of all homicides, now this is Home Office data from the Homicide Index, um, for over 41% of homicides, and they, these include ones in the home or out on the street involve the use of kitchen knives. So when we think back of some of the safety mechanisms that we have in our everyday lives, and I've got the image here of a seatbelt, you know, when you think of vehicles and the safety modifications that we have in vehicles, so seatbelts, airbags, you know, they're there to um, to lessen harm if there were to be an accident. However, kitchen knives are tools effectively. Um, however, in my experience, at that moment of altercation, they transition from a tool to a weapon and it's solely down to the design of the blade. So we refer to knife crime in the UK as um, knife enabled crime and there are over 50,000 uh, recorded offences. This is the latest data published last week, which was the 19th of October 2023. And this is up to the year ending June 2023. And like perhaps what the public may perceive to be um, knife crime when they look at the media, this impacts rural communities and also urban areas. So there is no distinction, this, you know, wherever you are in the, and this, this includes around the world. When you look at the United Nations um, work, violence against women and girls, there are numerous countries where knife crime is prevalent. And as I previously said, you know, we're dealing with street-based violence and domestic incidents. So this is a huge issue. I'm passionate about this as well because my university is a global hub for the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. The one that I'm aligned to, well, my institution is 16, which is peace, justice and strong institutions. So, you know, I feel empowered to try and help this situation. And our former Chancellor is Baroness Doreen Lawrence, and we are very fortunate and honoured to have the Stephen Lawrence Research Centre here. So Doreen's son, Stephen Lawrence, was the victim of a knife attack um, in 1993. And the legacy of Stephen's murder, um, it's changed so many things in our justice system, and so you know, we feel um, honoured to undertake research in that arena. As well as the Sustainable Development Goals, we, around the world, institutions within higher education, further education in the school sector, may be aware of Education for Sustainable Development, or effectively the acronym is ESD. So this is basically where we are encouraged to consider social, cultural, economic, environmental dimensions and look at it from the approach of interdisciplinary and how that should inform the curriculum and be embedded within it. So there are five key themes here um, that resonate within um, ESD. So it's, it's encouraging people to think about themselves as global citizens. So not only looking at where they live in their local area or region or their nationality, but consider the impact globally and how you know we can hope to improve situations. Also thinking about the environment and how we're we're stewards of the environment and we have to you know prevent any harm occurring to the environment um, currently and also for the future and it's also considering aspects of well-being so health um, thinking about inequality social justice ethics and I think the encouraging thing with ESD is for us to future proof what we do so it's looking forward and that also encourages us to think about lifelong learning so within criminal justice, um, we can, just a few examples, for example, using our chemicals within our forensic laboratory, so a finger mark enhancement laboratory, thinking about our use of solvents and how we can change um, what we do. And um, many changes have happened over the years anyway, when you think about solvents used um, in ninhydrin, for example. However, can we 
encourage ourselves to be solvent free moving forward and it's also the cost of techniques so for example some countries may be excluded for um, in their pursuit of justice because uh, they can't afford such techniques and also considering well-being when you think about some of the incidents that um, practitioners are engaged with on an everyday basis thinking about different types of offences they may interact with is that long-term mental health and well-being you can also include people trafficking and wildlife crime and also inequalities to justice so these are just a few examples where um, we, we can integrate ESD within criminal justice in our education programmes. So, for example, you could consider using case studies and see how we can reflect and review on what's previously happened. How can we improve things for the future? Um, you can engage with students and simulate um, some of the issues that are happening around the world right now. Um, Research projects, really effective way of encouraging the transformative effect of ESD, really encouraging people to undertake problem based learning. So informing strategies or answering um, different contexts. Always useful to have debates about inequality, for example, um, and how we can improve situations for people around the world. And a useful aspect that's transitioned in my career from practice to academia is the, the benefit of having reflection and how we can critique um, what we do and how we can improve things. And also, in align with the, the lifelong learning ethos, it's about us having this professionalism in wanting to develop and learn and improve situations. And that also translates to research informed teaching. So this is where often I've used my work on the knife crime research, and then I've embedded this within um, the experience for my students. So the Churchill Fellowship, um, I mentioned I undertook that in 2018 and I travelled to Australia and Canada and I visited academics, res uh, researchers, practitioners, crime scene investigators, um, pathologists, and I really wanted to obtain a perspective of how they investigated knife offences so that when I came back to the UK, I could compare their experiences and hopefully try and make a difference within the UK and since I went on that travel those um, experiences I've actually undertaken research using these unique novel knives and they have a distinctive rounded uh, tip and I undertook this research project and that led to a publication. So since then, I'm, I'm really keen of engaging my students with this in a line to um, the ESD theme and sustainable development goals from the United Nations. So just to give you a few examples. So this was the publication that we produced. So I really enacted some clothing damage using conventional pointed kitchen knives in conjunction with these novel rounded tip knives. And we were able to show that the rounded knives didn't penetrate the clothing. Therefore, um, they're less likely to cause harm from a, a stabbing shock force trauma injury. This then led to um, at the same time, there were changes to our Offensive Weapons Act within the UK and the National Police Chiefs Council produced these animated videos for the public and they encouraged the public to consider um, removing pointed knives from their home and transitioning to these uh, rounded tip uh, kitchen tools. And then from there, I've actually written a policy brief for the United Nations based on this research. Now, this is um, being communicated uh, via the SDG uh, network to over 5,000 organisations within the United Nations. So um, hopefully we can make a difference um, around the world in reducing violence against women and girls. And, you know, hopefully we'll see a positive change in society. 
So within my um, teaching with my undergraduate students at Montford University in forensic science, I just thought I'd give um, these. These are just a few of the examples where I try and relate my work to my teaching. So imagine the first year of the course, level four students. Um, I recreate some cases that I've worked on and one of these would be a knife examination and so the students are encouraged to undertake presumptive testing um, using for example chemicals for blood and then they also have a follow-up practical where they look at microscopy techniques from a knife for example so um, I recreate samples to make them make it look like skin tissue and fatty tissue and muscle tissue so um, they're able to identify those under the microscope in the second year of the course which is level five they in the, um, the seminar setting, we look through a, a more complex case strategy, so version of events with prosecution and defence, and we actually review a case that went to the Court of Appeal in the UK over several years. So we examine the decision making at that time with the evidence and the students see it through different perspectives so um from the defense side the prosecution and actually from the perspective of the uh, court of appeal judges so it's quite interesting i call this um sort of exercise a live lecture they decide the outcome um, they don't know what case they're dealing with at the time and then actually we we go through and I talk to them about the actual case um, itself and the case details and it's all around um, the concept of blood pattern analysis so they um, they get to interact with that and then in the third year um, they get to undertake independent uh, research projects and so the students can choose an array of different topics and um, so they can actually you know impart their own research and and I, I like to have like a small group um, research group ethos and so um, trying to you know use peer support when they're undertaking research and um, hopefully uh, generate some outputs from that research so these are just a few little ideas how I try and um, encourage um, you know people to explore this this concept of knife crime and hopefully try and have a see that they can have a positive impact on it so um, just at the top right hand corner image actually is one of these rounded knives and um, yeah going to, back to my previous analogy at the start it just goes to show you that they um, work in the way that pointed knives do, their kitchen tools and uh, yeah so hopefully people may consider transitioning to those as well. So I think anyone from um, a practice based background you know if you undertake any sort of research it offers a, a unique perspective um, for students and I'd really like to encourage anyone to consider thinking about the education for sustainable development and the SDGs in your own subject area and um, I'm currently undertaking research with um, numerous colleagues um, around the UK and on the, the taking the knife research uh, forward and um, and also with Dr Joe Dawkins from the University of Leicester and um, colleagues at the University of Teesside, Northumbria and also my colleagues at my own institution so trying to build a network I think that's really important the collaborative approach I think that's um, you know it should be encouraged as well. So just like to thank um, everyone who supported me with the research, encourages me to keep going with this concept and also the, the people that I met on my travels to Australia and Canada um, because they inspired me to, to keep going with, um, you know, trying to make a difference with knife crime and hopefully we will do so. So thank you for listening, everyone. And I'll be honoured to uh, receive any questions via email or you can contact me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And I hope you found this presentation interesting.